You are what God says about you. You are a son or a daughter of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. You are filled with God-given purpose. You are filled with God-given destiny. You are created on purpose for a purpose. You know, we're in a series looking at the character of Jonah in the scripture. Now, I love this book of the Bible, and we are starting right in Jonah chapter 1, verses 1 to 3, as we discover what it takes to step into your God-given destiny, what it takes to step into your God-given purpose, because I believe every single one of you is created on purpose and for a purpose. I want to remind you today that you are not a result of your past. You are not a result of your failures. You are not what your worst mistake is. You are not who that teacher said that you were. You are not what that parent said about you. You are what God says about you. You are a son or a daughter of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. You are filled with God-given purpose. You are filled with God-given destiny. You are created on purpose for a purpose. And I want to inspire you today through the Word of God to step up and into your God-given purpose, to say yes to God and to stepping into your divine assignments. You were created for so much more. We were not created for just a a small lives, but we were called by God to be His salt and His light in a lost and a broken world. He has sent us into a lost world to live a life on mission, to live a life on purpose for the glory of God, that you and I together would see His kingdom come, His will be done here on earth as it is in heaven. So it is my heartbeat and my prayer that you would step up and into the purpose of God. The Bible says in Jonah chapter 1, the word of the Lord came to Jonah, son of Amity. Get up, go to the great city of Nineveh and preach against it because their evil has come up before me. Now, Nineveh was an evil city full of darkness and iniquity, crime and violence and pain and suffering and it's like so many of the cities and villages and towns in which we live all around the world. So the Lord was calling him to go to this place of darkness. There was a lot of conflict between the Ninevites and the Israelites. They were constantly at war. So a Jewish man is not thinking, I want to go into a war zone. I want to go into a place where they hate me. They are our enemies, where I might lose my life. And very often God calls us to those very places that we think we should never go in order to bring his light and his hope and his mercy and his truth into a lust and a broken world. Yeah, dare I say, sometimes that's in our own homes, our friendship circles, our schools, our communities, our universities, wherever it may be, we all have a Nineveh. We all have that place that we're like, whoa, really God, that's where you want to send me? Now look at the attitude of Jonah. It says, Jonah got up, so the Lord said to him, get up. He did get up. Jonah got up to flee to Tarshish from the Lord's presence. You see, He thought, no, Lord, I'm going to go to the Spanish coastal town of Tarshish. I don't like Nineveh. I don't want Nineveh to repent. And sometimes we don't want to go and offer that forgiveness or that grace or that mercy because we know God in his infinite grace, infinite love, infinite kindness, infinite mercy is going to forgive those people. And sometimes we think they don't deserve forgiveness. That They don't deserve God's grace. Now, we want God's grace. We want God's forgiveness. We want God's kindness. But you know what? We just don't think that person deserves it. And so often in our cancel culture, that's exactly what we do. We want to cancel people for the very things that we have done in our own past. We want to cancel people because they've got different opinions to us, because they vote differently to us, because they don't look like us, because they don't like the things that we like, because they would do things a different way to us. And we think we're going to cancel cancel you and we don't believe that God should forgive you or God should love you and yet you and I want the mercy of God in our own lives. We want the grace of God in our own lives. We want the love of God in our own lives. So we need to be a culture that doesn't just call people out. We need to call people up and into the purposes of God. But what happened is the Lord told Jonah, I want you to go to to Nineveh. And Jonah says, no, thanks. I'm going to go to the coastal town. I want to go to Spain. I want to go to the resort town. Some of you are in situations right now And the Lord's asking you to do the hard thing. And you're like, no, I want to do the comfortable thing. I want to do the easy thing. I want to do the safe thing. I want to do the secure thing. But God has not called us to comfort or safety or security. He's called us to himself. He's called us to obey him. Don't sacrifice your purpose on the altar of comfort or security. Don't sacrifice your God-given destiny on doing what you want to do or your own ease or your own comfort. 
What we want to do is obey God because when we obey God, it leads to the abundant life that we truly are pursuing in our innermost beings. So it says the Lord called him to Nineveh, but he got up and he fled to Tarshish from the Lord's presence. Can I just remind you that every time you say no to God and get up and go the other way, you're actually walking away from the presence of God. And I would rather be with the presence of God in a difficult situation than to be in a situation that's comfortable but lacks the presence of God. I don't want to be anywhere that God isn't. I want to be smack bang in the will of God with the presence of God, with the empowerment of God, with the grace of God to do what God has called me to do in that situation rather than getting up and saying, God, I don't want to do what you want me to do. I'm going to go here and do my own thing and then not have the presence of God with me. I do not want to be in that place. And can I just tell you, neither do you. It might seem comfortable for a season. It might seem easy for a season. It might be a sense of relief for a season. But eventually that absence, that sense of not being in the presence and the purpose of God is what causes incredible anxiety. It can at times cause just such such a sense of purposelessness and hopelessness when you are not in the center of the will of God. So I encourage you, Don't flee from the presence of God. Don't pursue comfort, safety, security, stability at the expense of your purpose or your destiny. It says he went down to Joppa and found a ship going to Tarshish. He paid the fare and went down into it to go with them to Tarshish from the Lord's presence. He just kept moving and moving away from the presence of God. See, often a simple no, a small no, keeps leading to more and more no's. No one just sort of wakes up one day and says, man, I'm out here. I'm out of the will of God. I'm out of the purpose of God. I'm out of the presence of God. What normally happens is we say no to one thing. No, I'm not going to forgive that person. No, I'm not going to reconcile in that situation. No, I'm not going to restore that relationship. No, I'm not going to stop gossiping. No, I'm not going to stop lying. No, I'm not going to stop cheating. No, I'm not going to stop slandering. No, I'm not. We just do that one small thing because we think in this circumstance, it's okay. And then one year, two years, three years later, we end up right here, way outside of the purpose or the plan of God. It normally starts with one small no, and then the big no's get a lot easier when you get comfortable with the small no's. So don't devalue natural obedience, you know, because a a, a yes to God, being obedient to God, even when we don't understand it, even when we don't want to do it, it becomes part of our supernatural purpose and it becomes part of our supernatural destiny. So I wonder if you would be willing to trust the character of your God who is for you, who loves you, who adores you, who's not asking you to do something in order to hurt you or harm you or withhold something from you. The Bible says he withholds no good thing from those who love him. But he knows what's best for you. And if your hearts cry to fulfill the purpose of God in your generation and for your generation, then there are some things we need to say no to. There are some patterns and there are some habits and there are some relationships and there are some lifestyles and there are some things that we must cut off and say no to so that we can say yes to fulfilling the call of God, even when it seems that I'm going to Nineveh, even when it seems that I'm going to a hard place, that God's asking me to do a hard thing. On the other side of your obedience is revival. On the other side of your obedience is breakthrough. On the other side of your obedience is the very thing that perhaps you have been praying for. But sometimes it's just a lot easier to go to Tarshish. And in the day and the age in which we live, you're going to have a whole lot of people going the other way. And if you keep scrolling through too many people's lives, you're going to just see exactly the pictures and the images of, no, that's exactly what I want. And that's what God wants for me. And if they can have it, I can have it. And if it's that easy for them, it's going to be that easy for me. And a lot of us are sabotaging our purpose on account of someone else's Instagram account, on account of some image we see. God's calling us to Nineveh and we're looking and we're filling our feeds with pictures of Tarshish, metaphorically speaking. And so we're thinking, no, no, if it doesn't look like Tarshish, if it doesn't look like a Spanish resort town, it mustn't be God. It has to become And we see this. We see this in the culture. All the culture is about do what's going to satisfy you. You do you, boo. You fulfill your best life now. You live your best life now. You satisfy yourself. You gratify yourself. You actualize yourself. You discover yourself. You find yourself. Everything in our culture is go to Tarshish and live for self. But you're running out of the presence of God, out of the purpose of God, out of the will of God. And the Lord says, sometimes I call you to do hard things, but my presence will be with you. My power will be with you. My anointing will be with you. My grace will be with you. 
So do you want comfort without the presence of the Lord or do you want purpose with the presence of the Lord, with the enablement of the Lord, with the divine empowerment of the Holy Spirit? Purpose with presence far outweighs comfort without presence. And I just sense there's someone on the other side of the screen right now. And as I'm speaking, you know it's God speaking through me directly to you because everything in you has wanted to run to Tarshish, but you're going to pay a big fare to go the opposite way. Maybe you don't need to marry that person right now. And you know in your heart that God has been saying this. And you have just been thinking, but Tarshish, but Tarshish, but Tarshish looks so good. But to be in a place without the presence and the provision of the Lord ultimately is not going to be great. And it's going to bring you more pain than it is going to bring you satisfaction. But here, making the hard choice and saying, you know what, I'm going to deal with that sin. Maybe I need to end that relationship. Maybe I need to stay in this job that I've just wanted to leave. Or, or maybe I need to go and say sorry to that person. Or maybe I need to change how I conduct myself on social media. Or maybe I need to deal with that secret sin. Maybe I need to confess that habit. Maybe I need to go and get help for this situation. Lord, I can no longer allow this offense or this bitterness or this anger or this lust or this greed to just take reign in my heart. Lord, I need to stop running to Tarshish without your presence. And I need to say yes to going to Nineveh with your presence, with your power, with your provision. Lord, with your grace on my life, I believe that if you say yes to God today, a pattern will be broken. The power of that thing over your life will be broken in Jesus' name. I believe that the Spirit of God will set you free in the name of Jesus. And it's for freedom that Christ has set us free. Not freedom from hard things, but freedom to be able to do hard things for the glory of God, in the strength of God, empowered by the Spirit of God. God, so that we can become more Christ-like in our lives. Don't run to Tarshish when God has called you to Nineveh. Stay in the presence of God. Stay in the purpose of God. Continue to be empowered by the power of God. When we run to Tarshish, we run from his presence. You saw that twice in the text. The Lord says of Jonah, he ran from the presence of God. He ran away from the presence of God. Every time we say, no, we're going from the presence of God. We're going from the empowerment of God. We're going from the peace of God. We're going from the joy of God. And we have to rely on our own strength and no wonder it all untangles eventually. But when you go and do what God has called you to do, you can be assured of his presence. You can be assured of his power. You can be assured of his provision. You can be assured of his grace in Jesus' name. Thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure you hit the subscribe button and tap the bell icon so you're notified every time a new video is posted. I hope you'll share your thoughts in the comments and if you feel led, please share this video with a friend who needs to see it. Thanks so much for watching.